I'm sorry, there's some problem. But anyway, again. Okay, we were talking about the foundation principles. You asked me to just to go, to, go, go through it again. So some of the important principles of insurance is, of course, the principle of utmost good faith. It simply means that there must be honesty while filling in the insurance form. One of the basic principle or the condition while filling an insurance policy is of, you know, filling the form, sorry, with honesty. So you must disclose to the insurance company all information that is correct. For example, the right name, uh, the right passport number, the right details of the property and so on. So complete honesty is very important. So that's what we mean when we say utmost good faith. Next is insurable interest. In simple words, insurable interest is nothing but you must have the rights to the object you insure. Again, the example, you say, uh, who's, who, okay, say that Ali Mahmood, for example, Ali Mahmood has a car and he wants to insurance to insure the car, go to the insurance company and insure the car and take uh, automobile insurance. So the company will see whether he has an insurable interest. Then they will say, yes, he has an insurable interest because he is the owner of the car. So the insurable interest basically means if something gets wrong with the property to be insured, whether the person who is insuring it will suffer a loss. So that means also you must have the right to the property or the object you're trying to insure. That is insurable interest. So the point here is that you must have an interest in the goods or the property or the object that you're trying to insure. So this is insurable interest. Utmost good faith I've already spoken about. Okay. Next is. Okay. Okay. We'll go through that as well. Next is insurance contracts are contingent contracts. That is upon happening of an event, the amount will be released. Suppose one takes a fire insurance. Again, I'm giving fire uh, example of fire. So suppose you take a fire insurance. That means the incident should occur for the amount to be released. Understand? Except life insurance policy. Life insurance policy operates in a different way. So that's why we call it the, 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 the contract of adhesion. Because, sorry, the contract, no, adhesion, contract of adhesion, the contract of assurance. We call it assurance contracts, not adhesion, I'm sorry. Assurance contracts. So insurance contracts are contingent contracts. That is, it, it is uh, dependent upon happening of a particular event. Utmost good faith we already spoke about. A principle of indemnity. Now, what is indemnity is nothing but the value of the loss to be paid by the insurance company, but the value must not exceed the value of the loss incurred. That is to indemnify the loss or to make good the loss, to cover the loss. Principle of assurance, as I said, example, is life insurance policy. Now, Ali Muhammad is asked about subrogation. What is subrogation? It is simply means assignment of rights or trust, where... The transfer of rights or say guardianship is a transfer of rights from the insured to the insurer. If the insurer has paid compensation for the insured, who is the insured? For example, if you are taking a, an insurance policy, who is the insured? You or the product that you're insuring. And who is the insurer? The life insurance policy. For example, uh, say there is um, a particular brand of car. Okay, there's a particular brand of car and it is insured for, say, example, whatever amount, say, say 100,000. And the market price of the car is at that time. And then there was an incident that has taken place. And the market price of the car at that time of the incident was, say, around uh, 200,000. Example, then there is a loss of how much? 100,000 due to being hit by a third party, right? So now how does the company, how will compensation be calculated here? Now the insured, okay, that is say, for example, you are the insured, you are the policyholder. 
you will receive compensation from the insurance company that is the insurer of the difference amount of say 100,000 uh, and in this case the insurance company has a right to ask for compensation even from a third party. So the insured receives compensation for a, from a third party for this 100,000 and the insurance company does not provide compensation back. So the insured receives compensation from a third party Okay, say for example of 50,000 and the insurance company will provide compensation to the remaining difference of yet another 50,000 to the insured. Again, yet another example I'll give. Suppose a matter goes to the court. Okay, I'm talking about subrogation. In case a matter goes to the court and the court proceedings are prolonged. So then what happens? The court will say that, okay, uh, uh, say there is a third party claim, for example, there is an accident and there, there is a third party claim, the court will ask the insurance company, okay, you cover up the claim, okay, and you just pay the claim off. Are you understanding me? So taking over the insured's right by the insurer is called the, is called subrogation. In simple terms, when the insurance company releases the amount to be insured and the insured tries to make a claim elsewhere, for instance, instance to the court of law then in such situation the amount of claim will be subrogated to the insurance company the insurer to the extent of the amount disbursed to the insured under the relevant insurance scheme are you understanding me so the court will say okay the insurance company you pay the third party and whatever balance amount remains after the case gets over you paid the you pay to the insured are you understanding me well, next is the principle of contribution. Now, this is sim this simply means is when the object of your coverage is insured to with several insured companies. So there will be normally a contribution in protecting each of the insurance companies. For example, if you insure your car and everything that is in the car for a value of say fifty thousand, I'm just giving you a random example, fifty thousand. And you get insurance from three insurance companies. Okay. So what would you do? You would insure the car for say around with one company A with for 50,000, with company B with 30,000 and company C with 20,000. So your total insurance with three different companies is 50 plus 30 plus 20, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, uh, so 100,000. So then one day, God forbid, there is an accident. And the car is destroyed. So the amount of total compensation that you would receive is from three different companies. So this is the principle of contribution. They will assess the damage and pay the amount. So principle of proximate cause. Principle of proximate cause is the closest cause. That is causation. Proximal causation is a claim if the insured object experiences an accident. So the insurance company will try to find out here the main cause of the accident. And then from there, the insurance company will decide to determine the number of claims received by the policy holder. Next is the law of large numbers. Now, this is an interesting uh, principle which covers only group insurance policies. Okay, where, uh, you know, it refers to a statistical axiom which states that larger the number of exposure units independently exposed to the loss, the greater is the probability that the actual loss experience will equal expected loss experience. So this is a law of largest numbers. Okay, now uh, Ali Mahmood also asked me about adhesion. So principle of adhesion is nothing but, uh, you know, it is something, insurance contracts are something that is non-negotiable. The normal feature for contract is you can negotiate a contract with whoever you're contracting. However, with principal con uh, with the with the insurance contracts, um, you know they are not, or they're not really negotiable. I wouldn't call it non-negotiable entirely, but I would call it as less negotiable, or rather, I would say that's the reason they call it as a principle of adhesion. Principle of adhesion. The reason is that um, you know they they don't they don't negotiate the contract with you they just say that you must accept the terms of the policy are you understanding whatever are the terms and conditions of the policy you must accept it 
as a person who wants to take the policy. So that's why we call it as a principle of adhesion. Adhesion means to adhere to. Adhere to means you have to abide by those principles. You have to follow the terms of the policy. Normally, in other contracts, you can negotiate the contract. But in insurance contracts, we say it is a non-negotiable contract. Or I would personally call it as it is less negotiable. I mean, you mostly you cannot negotiate it. Rarely they negotiate. I mean, I got experience of negotiating it. I mean, not to a larger extent, but to a very minor fractional extent. So, well, since it has an element of uh, not easily being negotiable, it's called as a principle of, it's it's called as, uh, or you, you would say that it revolves around the principle of adhesion where the policyholder has to adhere to the terms and conditions that are attached to the insurance policy. Next is fortuity is just a part of every insurance policy. Okay. And um, again, it implies that the inherent factor of any insurance bargain is to interchange a risk of future probable impending loss for the certainty of a premium. I don't know, something is wrong with my laptop today. Okay, so so that's about it, right? So we went through the principles. And what's the proximate cause? The closest cause. I told you the proximate cause, the most proximal cause or the proximate cause depending upon the causation theory, cause and effect. What a, example accident and the property is destroyed. What is the cause of property destruction? Accident. What is the effect? Property is destroyed. How the property got destroyed? Accident. Accident, say motor vehicle accident. Cause. Effect is it's destroyed. Cause and effect. They study the cause and effect. Are you understanding? Or fire. Fire accident. Fire, uh, the house is burned. Fire has burned someone's house. So fire insurance. What is, uh, how the house got burnt? Fire. Now here, whether there is negligence or not is yet another factor and, you know, different rules and laws are applicable. I'm just confining myself to just insurance. And at present, we are just talking about the principle of proximate cause. That's all I'm trying to explain. However, if you look at it, the, you know, it's a very huge picture. If you want to paint it fairly, it's a very huge picture because there are many other things involved. But just confining myself to insurance law and, you know, um, narrowing it down to the principle that is applicable here, the principle of proximate cause, not completely and practically speaking, but theoretically speaking, yes, cause and effect. That's it. So that's all. So we'll just do chapter one today. And next class, we'll do chapter two. And, we'll, and I'll put, uh, again, I'll ask you some questions on chapter two and you'll have to you know uh, give an answer to those questions and submit it via google classroom anything else